Hello, and welcome to our recital of music for bass clarinet and piano. We've really enjoyed putting our programme together, though it's been quite a challenge to convert our sitting room into a TV studio, and in particular, to find a camera angle which would allow us to show the whole bass clarinet in a single shot. Given that this is a rather rare instrument, I thought I'd start with a few words about its history. First developed in the late 1700s, the bass clarinet was given its current shape and keywork in the 1830s by Adolf Sax, inventor of the saxophone which explains the obvious design similarities with the bell and the crook. However, despite these surface similarities with the saxophone, the bass clarinet is made out of the same materials and is acoustically much closer to the ordinary clarinet. During the 1800s, its deep voice rapidly found a place in the opera pit and the music of Richard Wagner especially. As you'll hear in our programme, the size of the bass clarinet puts it into the same register as the cello and the bassoon. And although in the early 1900s, it became a regular member of the symphony orchestra. It wasn't until the 1960s until many composers were to write for it as a solo instrument, largely in an avant-garde style. Yet there are a handful of pieces for bass clarinet and piano which come from before that period, and we'll begin with one of them, Eugène Botz's Ballade, written in 1939 whilst the composer held the post of conductor at the Paris Opera Comique.
Most composers have no scruples about arranging their music for alternative forces. After all, it means that more people can perform them and more people can hear them and more people might buy the sheet music too. Johannes Brahms was no exception to this and he himself made arrangements of his orchestral music, for example, for two pianos and piano duet. And there are alternative versions of pieces like the beautiful clarinet sonatas, which get played by a lot of viola players. He was also very happy for other musicians to make their arrangements of his music. He regarded it as an act of theft for love and saw it as a sign of respect for the tradition and above all, a sign of friendship. My own particular favourite is an arrangement of Brahms's first violin sonata for cello, by the, uh, which was made by the cellist Paul Klengel, which is a really successful version. It's in that spirit of respect and love for the music that we've made our transcription of uh, one of Brahms's earliest duo sonatas, the cello sonata in E minor. The bass clarinet and the cello seem to have a lot in common. They can be effortlessly lyrical, but uh, can turn on a sixpence and reveal their gruffer side at any, at any time. We're just going to play the first movement today.
We move now to a second piece borrowed for the bass clarinet, but this time to a piece whose borrowing was authorised by its composer, Paul Hindemith. The story goes that in the 1950s, the Czech bass clarinetist Josef Horak was doing some practice after an orchestral rehearsal in a German radio studio when he was asked some questions by a stranger who had been sitting in the rehearsal room. Could he play that passage an octave higher? Could he play it even softer? And so on. After a while, the stranger asked whether Horak had ever considered playing Hindemith's bassoon sonata. Horak said he'd thought of it, but didn't suppose that Hindemith would agree. As you'll probably have guessed, at this point the stranger revealed himself to be Hindemith, and the piece became a key work in the bass clarinetist's repertoire. It has even been claimed by bass clarinetist Henri Bock that Hindemith told Horak that he preferred the work on its new instrument. Josef Horak, by the way, has been credited by giving with giving the first ever solo bass clarinet recital in 1955 with his wife and duo partner Emma Kovanova. And this is in great part Horak's advocacy of the instrument, which led to its subsequent popularity with composers. I was very fortunate to hear the duo perform in Rotterdam back in 2005 at Horak's very last recital, given during the World Bass Clarinet Convention.
As we've discovered in the course of this programme, it took many years for the bass clarinet to emerge from the depths of the orchestral woodwind section and establish itself as a fully-fledged solo instrument. When we were putting the programme together, we found ourselves wondering when was the first piece of solo bass clarinet music composed? It's maybe a pointless question, and it's quite hard to come up with a definitive answer, but after a bit of research, we believe that this piece that we're about to play by the Belgian composer Francois Rass was first published in 1911, which means it's a strong contender for the very earliest piece to feature the bass clarinet as a solo instrument. And so we arrive at the final item on our program, the Légende et Divertissement by French composer Jules Semler Collery, written in the early 1950s and dedicated to Jean Dubois, bass clarinetist at the Paris Opera Comique. It falls into the slow, fast format in which a great number of works were composed for the Paris Conservatoire Wind Instrument Auditions, and which feature many similarly evocative titles. Semler Collery himself wrote for flute, an introduction a solterelle, and a pastoral et caprice, 
the oboe, a contilène, a petit divertissement, and for clarinet, a fantasy, a danse en forme de gigue, a lead, a finale, and a reverie, a scherzo. In the piece we are about to play, the légende gives an opportunity for the bass clarinet to display its ability to play mysteriously in the low register, and the divertissement is indeed a charming diversion in which a graceful sort of slip jig alternates with a yearning and lyrical melody. Thank <laughs> you. 